Hello everyone. Today we're going to start a new art project for Hispanic Heritage Month. We'll be creating pop art inspired by Romero Brito. Let's take a look at some of his work. So here he is in his studio working on a very colorful artwork. Let's watch a quick video to learn more about him. These are the works of Romero Brito. They're joyful, simple, and you may start to notice they're all over the place. But who is Romero Brito? And how did he become so prolific that he is the most licensed artist in history? Let's start with the basics. Romero Brito is an artist, more specifically, a contemporary artist who blends pop art with Cubist-like abstraction. And the subject matters that I do is very simple, very direct. And I'm very consistent with my colors. And then the lines, the stripes, the little things that I put in my work that is part of my vocabulary. He was born in Brazil to a big family, and growing up was pretty tough. My mother had like 12 kids. I wanted to get out of the house because it was chaotic. And little did he know, art would become his ticket out. Since I was a kid, I always liked drawing, but I never knew that it would change my life. At age 25, he moved to Miami, where pop art was flourishing. I was like, you know what, I love America, I love Miami particularly because it's such a dynamic city. With no formal art training, he would paint on newspapers and on the streets, the only canvases he could afford. Before I show my work in galleries, I show my work on the sidewalk in Miami. He was able to move into a small studio, soon getting his first brand deal with Absolute Vodka. And from there, his career took off. Disney, Coca-Cola, Mattel, Samsung, luggage, lamps, watches, bananas. If you can slap a print on it, odds are there's a Brito version of it. His sculptures are in train stations, shopping plazas, hotels, corporate headquarters. The guy has done the Super Bowl, the World Cup, and the Olympics. So, yeah, Romero Brito is everywhere. How many pieces of art I've done? Oh, my God. Listen, you know, it's pretty hard to keep track of it. Hundreds? Like a few thousands. To keep the business going, he's hired dozens of employees, and the scale of the operation is staggering. Well, people say that I'm the most licensed artist in history, so I'm very honored for that because it means that my work is reaching out millions of people. I just don't want my art to be enjoyed by the elite of the world, but I want my art to be enjoyed by the masses as well. But nevertheless, Romero's art has caught the attention of celebrities and heads of state all over the world. All those pieces are here, are prototypes, and a trillion dollars. <laughs> People tend to say that if you're colorful and you're fun, you're not serious. But I do think we all searching for happiness. And to help others see this happiness, Romero's company has donated to over 250 charities, including the Holtz Children's Hospital in Miami. If we see all the time darkness, when there's going to be the moment of brightness? Everything about my work is things that I think is very pleasing to my eyes and to my heart and make me feel good because life should be about fun. All right, I'll go ahead and pause that. So his work is all about what brings joy and happiness, which is such a wonderful thing to have in our life. So how are we going to translate this into our art project? So First thing first, our art project should be about what brings us joy. So your first direction is to import a picture of what brings you joy. Remember, uh, we've done this before, but just a reminder, we can bring in a photograph by saying insert image, and we're just going to search the web. Now your subject is 100% up to you. So I have to think about what brings Miss Argain joy. Uh, kittens. Uh, kittens, yeah. That's what brings me joy. So I added the word drawing just to find a more simplified image for my artwork. Oh, this is going to be so fun. Kittens. Yeah, I definitely want to do kittens for my artwork. So I, um, when I'm choosing an image, I want, I have to think of like, what is my end product? I want to see all of the cat in my artwork. So, you know, like this picture here, the booty of the cat is cut off. So I probably don't want that. That's, I'm actually thinking about this one because uh, it's got the whole cat, but I'm also contemplating if I want to do something more simple and cute. 
because I really like the like the look of kittens versus cats. Uh, that is insanely cute. I think that is that is definitely a contender right there. That is super scary. So I'm looking for a picture that's going to work best for my project. And thinking about, do, can I fit the whole cat? Is it the kind of style that I want? And I think my final choice is going to be, I think I actually do like this cat because yeah, I love the, the profile of the cat. So this is something that brings me joy, is this kitten. Oh yes, I like it a lot. So I, for now, I've chosen a kitten and I'll place it off to the side. Notice this is my working space, the, the checkerboard that is white and gray. So I've placed the cat, I've selected it, clicked it and dragged it off. So I've completed number one, import a picture of what brings you joy and place it off to the side. So right now, my number two is to create a background with shapes, colors and patterns. So the way you approach this, this is again, another place where you have your voice and your choice. If I'm looking at our inspiration, I see that sometimes the background is super colorful and different. Sometimes it's more realistic, like having a ground and like a sense of the sky. Um, sometimes, um, you know, especially when you're looking at 3D work, he chooses white backgrounds. I think uh, uh, when he does words, which if you wanna do a word, do a word, this is your artwork. Um, this one has a white background as well. And then sometimes if he's doing a portrait, he'll go really simple with it, with the background. Let me see if I can find a portrait. Here's an example of a portrait where the background is quite simple, only two basic shapes or symbols. Here's another example where it almost kind of looks like real life. So you've got to choose between uh, kind of creating a real background, even though it'll still have colors and shapes and patterns, a simple background with maybe just like one color and one pattern, or something that is more complicated. All three choices are totally fine. It's just thinking about what is gonna work best with your subject. I think this cat might end up being like having a lot of shapes and colors. So I think I'm actually gonna stick with something kind of simple. I want to create just a couple of shapes in the background with my patterns. So I'm going to use my shape tool, just selecting the rectangle tool. And I'll, oops, I don't think it made my shape. Try again. Let's see if I can see the bottom. Here we go. My shape was not quite the full size. So I'm going to bring it down. So my blue square right now, it is it's just taking up just over half the space. And I'm going to create another rectangle to fill the other space. What's great about the shape tool is that um, it's really easy to manipulate even after you create the shape. So I'm just taking a moment to line up my shapes that looks nice at the top looks nice at the bottom. But if I had accidentally made my shape too small, I can select the shape, hover my mouse until see how it, this is select. I've got arrows on all four sides. Now I just have an arrow going down. I can drag that and make it the size that I want. And then I'm also going to, um, Romero Brito uses really thick lines. So I'm going, let's check out four pixels. Hmm, I honestly think that eight pixels so here's my line thickness. I'm gonna change it up to eight pixels. That looks more his style. And um, colors are completely up to you. And uh, think about this is what makes you happy. So these are probably gonna be colors that make you happy. Let's see if I can go a little. Try that. I can always come back and change these colors. Not like a bright color, but one that's like not too light. Okay, I like that. And now I wanna, so that the basics is just using shapes tool to create the basic shapes. And now I wanna create some stripes. So I actually end up using my polyline tool. And if I want to create a stripe, I will, you know, 
do my best to create a stripe. Huzzah. We're gonna go back to that eight pixel thickness. And hmm, what color do I wanna do? Let's try pink. Oh yes, yellow and pink, I'm loving it. All right, let's make some more stripes. Very nice. Now, for my perfectionists out there, if you double click on your polyline shape, you can actually edit the points. See, I double clicked and it popped up that purple point. And I can move it and adjust my stripes like so. That's looking more even, but this one probably needs to come over here. Very nice. Let's see if we can make another, oopsie. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that line. Try again. Create some more stripes. Like so. Um, I'm gonna just like, I feel like it, it needs something that's here in the corner. And I actually kind of feel that the same about it down here too. So that's how you create stripes, that's really cool. I honestly feel like this one in the middle is too big, but it's not bugging me that much. So now I wanna maybe create some polka dots over here. So for that, I think I'll just use my shape tool. And here, the great thing is that um, you can actually just have your shapes go off the page. So watch this. I'm creating my polka dots. I'm actually gonna create it going off the page because um, I'll just screenshot the inside. So let's make sure we go to our line thickness or our border weight. Eight pixels seems to be a really good size. And then hmm, I have to think about what's gonna go good with purple. How about, uh, do I like it? Yes, I do. All right, now I've created one polka dot. If I want all of my polka dots to be exactly the same, I'm gonna go to Edit Duplicate or Control D. I highly recommend using Control D because it's so darn fast to make a whole bunch of copies, <laughs> like super fast. And then I can start arranging them. Now notice how this one is on top of that pattern. Don't worry about it, I'll show you how to fix it in a minute. Watch your spacing on your um, polka dots. You want it to kind of be evenly spaced, kind of the same amount of spacing. Need a couple more, so I'll press Control D. Dude, I just love to be able to replicate super fast. Oops, let's fix this. This is, um, that one is actually okay, but this one needs to like, move over big time. I like that, yeah, I feel like, this should almost be like a line, right? That pattern would probably be off there. So yeah, I do spend a bit of time just kind of like making sure my pattern has like a nice look to it. Cool. And so now you're thinking, Miss Argain, that doesn't make any sense because this pattern is not staying over here. So these right here that are going off the edge, we don't care about those but these are definitely in our way. Um, so essentially what we need to do is we need to get this shape under these shapes so that it looks like it's cut off. So I'm gonna click on this shape and I'm going to go to arrange order, send backwards. The other way you can do that is holding down, I believe, let me double check, I think it's control and then down arrow. Backwards is yes, control down arrow. So, Control, holding control with my left finger and then using my right to press down. Until it goes, oh, see, it went behind the pink one. Now let's see if we can get it behind the yellow. Oh, it went behind the purple. So we need the purple to go down lower. So I'm gonna click on the purple now. Control down, go back to my circle. There we go, see? It's on top of the yellow, below the yellow. And now it looks like 
it's part of it. That's so cool, Ms. Arjane. You're right. Control down, control down, control down, control down, control down, control down. There we go. Control down, control down, control down, control down, control down, control down, control down. One more because it's still technically on top of the yellow. Booty full. And remember, um, no one will ever see the fact that your pattern goes outside of the box. I'm digging this. This is looking nice. And then um, my cat is going to appear like it's below. So now to bring it up, I'll use control arrow up, control arrow up, control arrow up. And I'm going to just press that so many times until it's all the way on top. Oh, I like that. I like kind of how the cat, I'm going to resize this until I'm happy with it. So I actually kind of want my cat to be sitting on the bottom, you know, kind of like the bottom of the artwork at the bottom there. That's better, but his ears are getting cut off. So again, I'm going to resize this. That's much better. Now that I like, I'm just going to pair that up right there. So that is what we are doing for day one. We will be working on drawing our subject next week and adding colors and patterns, but this is our work for this week. So just a reminder of everything that we've done today. Let's put in a little text box and we'll go over it. Here's what we did today. We, um, we inserted an image that brought us happiness. What brings you joy? For me, it was a kitten. For you, it's whatever brings you joy or a word that brings you joy. And then we did our background. Shapes first, then pattern. We use control and the up arrow. How do we do an up arrow? Control up and control down to move pieces. And resized our subject. That is it for today. Again, we will continue working on this project next to week the mundo. And I cannot wait to see you play around with creating these patterns and shapes and this colorful artwork. I'll stop sharing my screen. All right, guys. See you next week.